Yeah. So what we will do, so I think we did discuss this uh, TTVV. So this is what we ended up last time. We talked about T forms and the closed P forms. And we gave this definition, so I just remind you. So this was the last thing we did. So there was the definition. Um, when X was the spectrum of the CDGA, you had a P form, a P form of weight K or of degree K. So degree K, we define it on this affine the uh, AG scheme to be for E bigger than zero and uh, k less than or equal to zero. We define it as omega zero being in the lambda p of the DG sheaf of differentials, k less differentials on this affine scheme, setting in degree k internal to the k of this thing, such that um, dw zero zero in the degree k plus one piece. And you know, then we had the notion of equivalence, so we set two p forms of degree k. Let's call them w zero and w tilde zero are equivalent. This is an uh, essential actually definition by the way, are equivalent and that is written as so written W0 equivalent to W0 tilde um, if there exists if there exists some alpha 0 inside the K minus 1 piece such that the difference is the D of alpha so, W0 minus this guy is the D of alpha 0. So, this is the notion of equivalence in this thing. So, then we said that the equivalence then, the equivalence class, equivalence classes, we note it by like this, are P forms. Omega zero of degree k on this affine DG scheme uh, correspond to correspond to connected components connected components of the simplicial initial set um, of P forms of degree K on this affine scheme. Set of P forms of degree K on this affine scheme in the sense of in the sense of so this is the last thing we covered during the last session. Okay, so this is that. And we know why this is true, because you know we know that these are realized by homology classes. And given the degree, we get the connected components. So this I discussed last time also. The pi zero, this was reminder, reminder. Further reminder, the pi zero of the space of P forms over, you know, affine schemes over, let's say, complex numbers of degree K was identified with the HK part, because there are these shifts and so on, of the lambda P of this guy with its differential, which is the HK minus P of lambda P of the sheaf of differentials on. A dot and shifted it by P. So 
this is why the connected components are realized. Okay, so this was discussed last time. So these are those guys. Okay. So now, mm, now let's continue. So now, let us look at the tangent sheet. So I guess we know that the DG tangent sheet is given by Tom over A dot modules from sheaf of chemical differentials to, to basically the algebra itself. So that's the DG tangent sheet. And this is the derivations with coefficients in this algebra. So this is the tangent sheaf, but also we, we discussed that if x, so if I have this x, which is just an affine of scheme, so tangent sheaf of this DGA, underlying DGA of the affine scheme, does play the role of tangent complex, cotangent complex. Therefore, the hum from that to the base algebra does play the role of the tangent complex. So the model for the tangent complex. So this is the tangent complex of a dot. Now at 2, 4, comma the 0 of degree k on this affinus e defines an anti-symmetric anti-symmetric amorphism So this is what a two form defines. So if I if you give me the two form, then you get this anti-symmetric morphism from tangent complex of a dot to the cotangent complex or the cotangent DG sheaf of a dot shifted by k. Just because it's a degree k. Which basically means that if you give me this a graded vector space, if you give me a vector in here, that would be the you know contraction of the two form along that vector. As, as you have seen, what a two form does on a, for instance, uh, you know, uh, just on a manifold. So it gives you a morphism like that. And so, Form, the two form is said uh, to be non degenerate if this morphism morphism uh, is a quasi isomorphism. the isomorphism between the tangent and cotangent complex shifted by k induced by this two form then it is non degenerate okay so now we can immediately see that it seems like for dg schemes we have an orthodoxic vector forms so those are the forms which are closed in our sense and they are non degenerate also in our sense and there are two forms Notation. Oh. Notation. We are going to use maybe this. So when x affine. Okay, so if I have this affine scheme over C, then we can look at the product over all i bigger than zero of lambda p plus i's omega dot 1 over a dot shifted by a minus i. So we can look at all of these things 
and as uh, which is which is then this thing is the product of complexes lambda p plus i over the one k minus i mu Hence, the difference between this and this other guy, which we had before, where the sum k minus i is that omega i i bigger than zero, which is an element of the direct sum, lambda p plus i, omega dot one k dot k minus i, uh, have omega i not equal to zero for only finite linear elements, or only finitely, finitely many. However, the product could be an infinite product. So this is our notation. So whenever I say this, this really means an infinite product. Direct sum means it's finite. Okay. Um, so in principle, these forms, uh, these closed forms, are given as infinite sequences because for your for your DG scheme. Therefore, therefore, I zero of the closed P forms over some affine scheme of the DK are realized by H zero of the, the product I bigger than zero. Sum of these guys with the differential given by p plus p durham. Durham is the one that increases the weight, and d is the one that increases the degree. We discussed this, and this is equal to hk. I, this one minus I. Okay. So now sometimes Actually, in this subject of you know shifted simplicity structures, the negative cyclic cohomology complex of the Durham complex of the algebra or the scheme can be used to define the P forms or the closed P forms. I tell you what these are. So let me give you some definitions. It's just a rather different representation, so it's notation mainly. The definition. Given a graded um, mixed complex, mixed complex means that, similar to this thing, we have two differentials and they are communicating with each other. So given a mixed complex, P dot, for instance, for each P, we can, we can define the negative uh, cyclic uh, complex of weight T, which is basically by definition given the following way. 
it's a complex, and there's homology on homology on B. In mega disk, there's homology on homology. So, so negative cyclic complex for E dot is given by, it's written negative cyclic of E dot, and it is written exactly like this thing in here. This thing in here. E dot k minus two i e plus i. You have the periodic cyclic homology or the cyclic complex, and you have just the cyclic complex. All of uh, all of them weight p, and the difference between them is one of them is i bigger than zero, one of them is just all i, and the other one is i negative. Maybe I can actually, just for sake of completeness, I also define those things. So we also, we can also define, we can also define those periodic cyclic complex of the dot, which is this one. So this is written periodic cyclic complex of P dot of weight P of weight P. It's written as CCK P dot of weight P, which is product for I less than one. Yeah, less than or equal to zero. P dot of K minus two I P plus I. Okay, so you have these things. And in fact, remark. Mark, there exists an exact sequence between these complexes. So you have, um, you can see that negative cyclic complex of E dot goes to periodic cyclic complex of E dot, all of them weight P. For each fixed integer P, this goes to the cyclic complex of E dot. Cyclic complex of E dot of weight P minus 1 shifted by 1. So you can find anything if you want. So then you can take the you know, homologies of these things, which induces a long exact sequence of homology. A long exact sequence of cohomology, which is basically a um, C K plus one of E dot P minus one goes to H N of K. Dot of P and goes to HP of K HP CK of E dot of P and goes to oh, HC 
species H and make it look simple. So H N C sorry, H P C and then H C C K plus two. Anyhow, so we are not going to I mean this negative cyclic homology is essential in actually proving this local Darboe theorem that I'm going to just state. And this exact sequence is actually essential to proving the statement. Um, that local Darboe theorem basically tells you that a closed form, so if you have some derived scheme, then you can cover it with derived affine schemes. And in a certain chart, you can actually take the closed form, um, two form of some degree, you can write it in a, in a more, much more simplified format, which I will tell you what it is. So basically, for an infinite sequence, you can write it in a, in a, in a, in a specifically cooked up chart as just a degree zero piece and everything else being zero. That's called local dark mode theorem. And it uses the communication, the proof of that, the statement, uses communication between three, these three complexes and their homology. I'm not going to use a theorem like this for the sake of completeness. Okay. Nevertheless, the negative cyclic complex we know that has this this description, and now you can see that the Durham complex, where the you know the closed forms, the closed G forms of degree K belong to this one because it's the sum, it's the product of the whole I B and C. So let's go back to that. So this was only our notation. Now, uh, definition. writing the definition, let me write down some facts. So, remark for any graded uh, mixed complex D dot, we have projection projection from the negative cyclic complex of D dot of rate K and the negative cyclic complex of D dot onto D dot. Which is a morphism of mixed complexes. Of course, D dot is a mixed complex and negative cyclic complex is also a mixed complex, and you have a projection from one to the other. And so what it does, um, so now if you look at the negative cyclic complex of the Durham complex of some affine scheme, so what was this thing? This was just a product i bigger than zero, lambda i. Uh, this is what we just de de defined. So, um, so this one is the lambda p plus i of uh, shifted by minus i. Which, by the way, we, this is basically what we defined as the negative cyclic complex of the Durham algebra of A dot. Or the, or also it's equivalent to the following notation, negative cyclic complex of the symmetric algebra over A dot of this thing. Yes, it's true because this thing is nothing but this. So you have these two. So then, for the 
negative cyclic complex of the Durham complex, we can see immediately that this guy, I'm using, uh, oh, by the way, this also sometimes equivalent is written as this. These are all different notations, so notation. All of them are the same. So what is the negative cyclic complex of an A dot? It is the one associated with the mixed Durham complex of A. These are all notations. So from here, you can actually see that um, if I look at the P weight P of these, then I get a projection to uh, lambda P of A dot. Here, this is something very silly, really. I mean, this is all the products of all possible, all possible pieces, and the pieces there are just the stereo derivative of the cotangent complex. Oh, by the way, this was I'm sorry for the notation, so I can just use this rather. And so yeah, so you can just project it onto it onto the field. Okay, so. Intuitively, of course, somehow roughly, and by roughly I mean if you don't be so pedantic about which degree goes to which degree, this is something that if you have some closed form of degree P sitting in here, like this, it sends this guy to the W0 piece, or one of these pieces. So, so this is one of those examples of such. This is why we call the first one the W0. So this sits in the complex. Okay. What else can I say about this, this piece? Um, Well, I will say more about it. The closed form, remember that we only had intuition about what the closed form is because we looked at the derived Lucas stacks, right? The derived Lucas stacks and the closed forms are the equivariant forms with respect to the action of rotations by circle on the derived Lucas stack. That was only for the classical scheme, not the D. Now, we have similar action on, the, on a derived locus stack of a DG scheme. And we know that the Durham complex of the DG scheme is realized via HKR isomorphism as the push forward of functions defined on the derived locus stack or the shifted cotangent complex. Now, we can the, discuss the notion of equivariance with respect to an action there. I will say something about it. The so action, far, I haven't defined it. The action is given by the the action, uh, yes, that's right. Infinitesimally given by the that's right. The implementation, yes, that's right. So you're referring to the fact that if I'm over the shifted cotangent bundle or the odd cotangent bundle, then this action of a circle on the derived Lucas stack is realized by translation in the cotangent bundle. And the infinitesimal generator of that translation is the differential test. So I will say, I will say now something about um, but, um, okay, so now uh, given all of this with this definition we can see Closed forms of the degree weight P are the affine scheme of the decay are the 
consider an A0 um, the product. This is nothing but a negative cyclic complex. like omega, omega 0, omega 1, omega 2, and it keeps going. Okay? This is the space of closed P forms, and this is realized from here, the connected component of the negative cyclic complex. Now I'm giving the definition of the closed P form. So, So this is something like that with omega i elements of lambda p plus i omega 1 in a dot sitting in the k minus i of the Durham complex for i equal to 0, 1, 2, etc. satisfying equation d omega 0 is equal to 0 in lambda p uh, piece k plus 1 and d the hum of omega i plus d of omega i plus 1, this is the internal d, this is the Durham d, with that equal to 0 in lambda p plus i, we need to check these things, but because I may have mistakes. So this one here, but I think that I think pretty much is the same as the, the work, papers of Joyce and Horab and Busi. Any I bigger than it. We call two closed P forms W equal to W zero, etc., and W tilde equal to W tilde zero, etc. Um, degree k equivalent equivalent and written w equivalent to w tilde if there exists some alpha equal to alpha zero alpha one on and so forth. Such, well, you know, one thing. Here's the difference between Dirac geometry and regular geometry. When we were discussing uh, a P4, a P4 is just a P4, right? It's an element of one of these guys. And then we have P forms of the weight K, fine. That is understandable because we have a two internal, two differentials, one of them is the internal. So p forms of degree k, and then we have a notion of equivalence between p forms, which basically means they are different by some exact thing. 
you can see that the difference between derived geometry and regular geometry is that a closed p-form is not a, a special case of a p-form. Why is it not? Because it's an infinite sequence of forms. Really different, right, from our intuition. It's not so intuitive. It's a system of differential equations, but that gives you a closed P form. But for a P form, it's different. Okay. So, uh, so we write something like that, and such that, so with alpha i's being elements of, so, so this is again. Check these, but I think it's okay. Lambda p plus i of omega one a dot k minus i minus one. Um, this paper of Rob and Lucy and Joyce, this is really an amazing paper. I think, well, it's published in JAMS, so it deserves it. I think it has been rewarded, but already in one of the best ways. It's really, it's really amazing to me, actually. They have written it. Coordinates and to me this is kind of unusual. Uh, really amazing, actually, not unusual. Um, K minus one minus one for zero one like that, satisfying satisfying omega zero minus omega tilde zero, the zero piece equal to P alpha zero in lambda P K piece, okay? And uh, lambda I plus one minus lambda tilde I plus one equal to D dirham, again, a complicated system, D of alpha I plus one in Lambda P plus I plus 1 of omega. K minus I minus 1. Okay, again, that's a really complicated system. So the morphism AP closed over C of weight k to just a p in the space of closed p forms of degree k of closed p forms of degree k on x in the space of p forms of degree k on x okay as given by again uh, i takes you from omega, which is omega zero to everything else, to just omega zero. Now, now we are almost done with defining a symplectic form. Non-degenerate closed form, two forms, right? So then, what is the symplectic form on a derived scheme? Dg scheme, a closed two form. Well, when I say closed form, now I know that I should be looking at an infinite sequence of things. Of degree k on x affine is called k shifted, k shifted symplectic form, k shifted symplectic form if omega zero is the pi of omega, which is the pi of omega, is uh, omega zero. The image of this map pi, pi this map, 
is a non-degenerate non-degenerate two forms of degree k. So omega zero induces a map from the tangent complex of a dot to dg tangent sheaf of a dot to the dg cotangent sheaf of a dot shifted by k. And this omega zero is the pi of omega zero. So underlying two forms of degree k produces a morphism of graded complexes across the SMR. Uh, uh, yeah. Is that morphism uh, analog of the uh, morphism from the covariant cosmology to the modulated cosmology? Yes. Oh, yeah. Very good. So let me just um, say what you said. I'm not going to say it in the form of the, what is the morphism, but yeah, essentially yes. So um, essentially what you said is complete, actually correct. So, uh, so that for that, let me let me say something first. So remark. So as you remember. This action of the rotations of the circle on the drive loop stack we realize by translation in the shifted tangent bundle. So I would like to add a remark about that. So given some affine scheme, its drive loop stack So remember that we define the drive loop stack for a regular scheme. So the drive loop stack of the DG affine scheme is the space of derived maps from circle to the DG scheme X. So the natural morphism, morphism S1, which is the classifying Z bundles, to BGM induced by induced by inclusion of Z inside GM, the C star. This is the C star induces a morphism. Let's call this L, L prime or X tilde or L double prime of X tilde defined as R maps from BGM X tilde to this thing which is R maps from EZ to X tilde. Well, yes, of course. So I'm applying R map like X tilde, it's functorial, so it will just X. So what's a map from the GM? An equivariant map, oh, into inclusion. Oh, that's inclusion. So GM is a C star. Yeah. Uh, pi to the C star, pi. Yeah. And so, so this is a, this actually, one thing I should say, this turns out to be, this turns out, out to be an equivalence of derived schemes, but I'm not gonna prove it. An equivalence of derived schemes.
Well, again, if you didn't like this, just look at the description I gave last time about the drive loop step. It's the shifted tangent bundle, and you have the action of the circle, and infinitesimal action of the circle is realized by infinitesimal translation along this odd tangent bundle, which was C, uh, C, affine line, but uh, scaling by the C star. Scaling of points on the affine, uh, scaling of affine line by the C star. But let me say even more, so therefore, can see that the loop stack H, we called it earlier in our earlier lectures H, curly H or something, of automorphisms acts naturally on the drive loop and stack of X and so this one automorphism of the EGM acts naturally on the on the L of X uh, so, and we can take its quotient basically. So, and we get uh, this is that the quotient. On the VH, this is nothing. This is basically the projection onto a point. This is point stack equation having this H term. And uh, then it is possible to show that there exists, there exists a Functorial equals in the derived category of quasi coherent sheaves of this pH guy, which actually sends all of the quotient to stack to the Durham complex. And this is uh, for a regular scheme. This is this HKR morphism that we constructed. The HKR morphism was sending the structure sheet of the loop stack of a regular scheme into the Durham complex of the scheme, or here I can put Durham complex of X affine or on the same location. So that, and from this. One can see that. One can see that the negative cyclic complex of A dot, which is the space of closed P forms of given weight, are the EGM invariants for the. Um, S, um, S1 invariance near, oh, oh, sorry, VGM invariance or, or the S1 invariance through um, mapping of S1 to VGM. Okay. In the complex of functions 
Yes. Says that it says that there is just a natural equivalence of quasi coherent cheese on BGM. This thing will be just a negative sigma complex of three dots. There, L x the mod h to b of h to b of g m is the projection. So if the point is that, okay, so to look at this further, this construction, this is just a, in some sense, summary of an amazing paper of Ben Zivi and Nadia. So look at the paper of Ben Zivi and Nadler on loop stacks, loop stacks, and and connections. Okay, so really, this is the most compactified version of the, something that could be said in four lines about that amazing paper. It's really fantastic paper. One of my favorite, actually, because for the lecture I read it. Somehow went through it again, and you have to read it. So the idea is that yes, this negative cyclic complex of the PG algebra or the affine scheme over that algebra is realized by BGM invariant on this quotient. But you're right that the map from closed forms to the P forms is the map from the covariant homology to covariant. It's analog, analog, analog of that. Analog of that. But have a look at that because this is by no means a proof or even doesn't serve the justice of that paper. I mean, it's just a summary. I find this paper more understandable than the one uh, written by the original people. Just like it hints many things that we have seen from the This paper is also uh, It's true, really? Uh -huh. I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Actually, you're right. Completely. Because when I was looking at PTPV paper, they referred to this kind of, yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. It's really great. Okay, so this is all I wanted to tell you about this, this connection to the invariance. And now you know what the closed form is. Okay, very complicated object. All right, now, it is a very complicated object. So a closed form really Seems like something unworkable, almost an infinite sequence of p forms, and uh, so. But what if I can show you that there is a construction that if I give you a DG scheme, not necessarily affine, I can cover it with affine DG schemes, and I can always uh, find a description of a p form, a closed form, in that. 
the charts where the infinite sequence collapses to one form. That is a local Darbo theory. And that is called the Darbo description of the quantum form. So for position, um, so these are what, what we, we are gonna need. So yeah, so let part A let uh, omega equal to omega zero, omega one, etc. Be a closed two form of degree k of degree k less than or zero on for now affine scheme. Uh, okay, so for some standard CDGA, then there exists a mm, some function in here some function of degree k plus one in this algebra and some phi without the tilde in, in this degree k piece of the sheaf of the thresholds such that such that phi of phi tilde is equal to zero in k dot k plus two and Either on of phi tilde plus phi of c is equal to zero in here. And now this is the Darbo type of statement. And omega is equivalent in the sense of equivalence of a closed form, which I just gave you, to this sequence, phi Durham of phi tilde, zero, zero, all of them zero. So this is the local version. So what the, what the BBVJ did, Brav, Busi, Joyce, BBJ, BBJ, sorry, BBJ. And what the BBJ did, they first proved the statement over affine schemes, and then they argued that for PG scheme, we can cover these affine schemes. I'm not going to prove it. Detail, but I'm just stating, you know, browsing. So part B of this proposition is that in the case k equal to minus one, in A we have that we have that this guy, this function phi, is in degree zero, I mean, okay, what is this function gonna be? This is the function, which is the superpotential for this scheme. Later for our moduli stacks, this is the one that gives you the superpotential. But you see now your function is a weighted function. It's a, it's a, it's a function of degree k. Uh, No, I mean, it, uh, it takes your DG schemes into space of functions defined in that scheme, but it's a DG algebra, so it takes it into here. No, it doesn't. Well, you will see later. You will see later. Well, that 
greater potential. If you allow your function to generate a new intelligent generic sentence function, then the universal generic sentence will suddenly become the form of the I will mention exactly this thing. But I just to give you a heads up, this is this is not a statement. Uh, very highly important in Donaldson and Thomas theory. Um, and that has to do with the amazing statement of PGDV that they put all modular spaces are um, they have some shifted symplectic structure, especially for body of three, you have minus one shifted symplectic structure. Okay, but um, I will get to that. So so we can so we we have that this. So we can consider the restriction. This guy to the reduced scheme, reduced x of the tilde. So to the reduced. Uh, reduce the sub scheme x reduce of what is x? This is pi zero of the pg scheme, pg prime scheme, and this is remember what this was. This was the h zero, the spectrum of h zero of your pg ring. Then we can reduce this thing to there, and then this restriction of this potential, greater potential to this reduced scheme, is locally constant on x reduced, and we may choose. that um, P X reduced vanishes. Part three of this book I mean, this is really, I think, amazing result. Part three. Um, now suppose you have two of such things. You have this guy and data. Like that, p and p, p tilde p and p prime tilde p prime are alternate choices in part A for fixed and so. For fixed W for fixed form and weight uh, and degree, okay, and X and not. This is that sort of thing where if, for instance, K was equal to minus one, then we suppose we suppose. Uh, until the restricted x reduced is equal to zero, equal to p delta prime reduced, restricted to reduced scheme. As in b. Then, uh, then there exists, there exists some function psi. 
again of degree k in, in, in our algebra, and little psi in degree k part of our shape of differentials over that algebra, oh, sorry, degree k minus 1 part, such that, so with phi tilde minus phi tilde prime equals this phi of psi tilde, and phi minus phi prime equal to phi derham of, sorry, phi derham of psi tilde plus phi of little psi. So this is actually the invariant, this gives you the invariance up to the invariance up to the no, the up to equivalences of closed forms. This gives you that if you find two functions, then their difference is given by something that makes the two equivalent. So if you have a form omega and it collapses to a local Darboe, it becomes a local Darboe form given by this function, defined induced by this function. If you have two of these things, the two are equivalent. In the sense of equivalence in closed forms. And actually the proof of this is really, they did it in several examples for different values of k, and the proof of it is actually so, somewhat really actually I wanted to do one of those examples, and I was just like, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> it's, it's local proof in coordinates. Very, very explicit. But this is over the affine DG scheme, and so I say something about the, you know, overall proof for a DG scheme. So here is the Based on this proposition, here is the theorem they proved. This is the big BBJ theorem, the local Darboe theorem. So the theorem, of course, we should uh, rub Lucy and Joyce. This is their paper in the Journal of AMS. And suppose. X tilde omega is a k-shifted k-shifted symplectic derived scheme. So k-shifted symplectic derived scheme or derived uh, you know derived scheme over over some field k. For k less than zero. Okay, suppose that you have this. Now, if k is non congruent to 2 mod 4, this has to do, okay, so proof of this thing is in local coordinates, and then something happens for the forms in the middle degree, and I'm not going to explain it, but this is, this is the consequence of the construction. So if this is not congruent to 2, then each x in x admits a Zariski, a Zariski open, admits a Zariski open neighborhood Let's call that y tilde in x. Oh, now it's not an affine scheme, so I removed the tilde from x. With y tilde equal to the spec of some a dot for a dot and d, an explicit. CDGA 
over k generated by generated by variables x j minus pi y j k plus pi where i is between zero and minus k half. Same. What if k is odd number? Okay, that's fine. Okay, we can still do it. Okay. Now variables like that, and such that omega restricted to y looks like omega zero. The rest of them zero. Where x i l y i l for x j j l will have degree l and in this local description, omega zero takes the form j from zero to the integer five of minus k half, k equal to one, m i, d durham, y j k plus i, d durham. So the differential, differential D in this thing is given by, it's an ex explicit ring, you need to find it, and they find it. And the differential, the internal differential of this CG ring is given by Poisson bracket. on bracket with a Hamiltonian H in A dot of degree, this Hamiltonian is the greatest potential that we have for them, with degree K plus one. Okay, so if you look at their paper, there's several examples depending on the value of k in here, mod 4, and three examples. And in those you can actually see what is their greater potential in the Hamiltonian of each of these expressions. This is this Hamiltonian, well, you can call it p tilde because of the previous Now, I can say something about the sketch of the proof. Should I say something about the sketch of the proof or? So let's say something about, I tell you the sketch of the proof next time. Now let's say corollary of this. Corollary of this theorem is this. Suppose x omega is a minus one shifted, minus one shifted symplectic derived k scheme, then X omega is Zariski locally 
first key locally equivalent to derived critical locus with critical locus crit of some function u to uh, a a1 for u uh, a smooth a smooth classical k scheme k scheme and for this guy u to a1 a regular function the underlying classical subscheme subscheme x t0 uh, uh, yeah, permutation of this guy That. This is not affine here, okay? But I, I have these two notations I don't want to do. X tilde is not an affine. It's covered by affine. This thing is Zariski locally isomorphic to classical critical locus. Classical. U This is highly, highly amazing and important result. I remember precisely that. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. In the theorem, this phi is a potential of weight k. Weight k plus one. So the potential of weight k plus one, a graded function of weight k plus one inside the DGA. This is saying if you have minus one shifted symplectic structure, then it sits in degree zero. It's a regular function. Because it sits in degree zero, its critical locus is a sublocus of the spectrum of the A0, the zero part, the reduced part of the DG scheme. Then can realize that the reduced, I mean, the x0, the you know, reduced in the sense of dg reduced part of that scheme is realized as the classical critical locus of this function of degree 0, regular function. It's pretty nice. This is why it is highly important in the, in the applications of moduli theories because you have a moduli space. And you have a derived moduli space enhancement of that. But the pi zero of the T zero of that moduli space is the moduli space. The T zero of the derived moduli space. And sometimes you would like to say, can I realize my moduli space locally as a critical locus? This is it. This is highly important because I remember the, actually this I lived through it, even though not, I haven't been around for so long, but I remember actually, before 2009, the understanding was that if you have a moduli space with a perfect symmetric obstruction theory, then you can always write that moduli space as a critical locus. All the examples imply that this is the case. Then there was this thematic program which I was at, actually, as a graduate student in 2009 in Berkeley. In MSRI, 
And Rahul and Richard were there, and they were working on things, and they came up with this counterexample. They wrote a paper on it. And I show you that I have a moduli space with a perfect symmetric, self-symmetric construction theory in the sense of Phi Baron. Nevertheless, you cannot write it. Then it was obvious that something else must be going on, and this is that something else. But that changed after 2009. They wrote this beautiful paper. Okay, so that thing, and then remark, just to emphasize the importance of this theorem. Mm. PTBV prove that prove that if y or if x is a clavial manifold clavial manifold and m is the is the derived the scheme derived moduli or a stack or a stack of complexes of coherent sheaves putting your sheaves on X okay then all then oh sorry then M just M has a Natural, we will talk about this, has a natural 2 minus m shifted symplectic structure. Okay? So, if x is a clavial 3, then M has minus one shifted symplectic structure. And we can use PV theorem. This is truly remarkable. I'm going to show you a little bit about this proof of the Pantene PTBV. We are really now essentially in the main, most important part of this lecture series. We are caring about this proof very much, and we are caring about this statement that all modulizers of coherent sheaves have 2 minus m, and the degree, and the dimension of the underlying variety, 2 minus m should be simple. Okay, so this is the two main key ingredients which could not become possible without application of right geometry. And then we will talk about the work of Dennis over there. So he wrote this beautiful paper, which is started many other papers, with Joyce. We move to Colavial fourfolds. So for Colavial fourfolds, you have a not a minus one, so you cannot write it like that, but you have a minus two shift. But there, the, you will have a weight information, <laughs> which is still good. And so then we can talk about construction of thousand Thomas invariants for four folds. And then maybe at the end, we can talk about our paper at the end of the class. Maybe we can report on that part. Okay. So I continue with the PTBV statement. 